All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a brand new episode of Wrestling Things brought to you by 1310 Apparel, Turnbuckle TV and the Games and Grats podcast. I'm Sonny G and I am your host and on this episode I am talking to the awesome Alexis Falcon. Now this isn't your run of the mill wrestling podcast, all right, we talked all sorts of different stuff, we talked wrestling, we talked Disney movies and just we just went off on a tangent, basically, and it was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed speaking to her, and she just seems like a, a really cool person, and I really hope you guys enjoy the interview. I'm not going to waffle on. I'll save that maybe for after the interview, but for now, without further ado, here it is, Alexis Falcon. Alexis Falcon, welcome to Wrestling Things. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm good. Are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you very much. Um, I'm pretty tired today, to be honest, just because of my boring day-to-day life, but such is life. I'm sure I'll get over it. Same. I'm with you. With you on that one. Yeah, you got a boring day-to-day life as well? I have. Boring work life. Yeah, sucks. But, you know, we're we're not not about boring work life today. We're about uh, doing the cool stuff that we do outside of boring work life. Yeah, the things that make us interesting at work. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, that's it, yeah. (laughs) Isn't wrestling the most weirdest thing to be a part of though when other people don't watch it it is it really is i am um, in like my shoot job i had an interview the other week um for like a promotion and the first thing they said to me was like cause it was somebody from another department and they were like you were a wrestler um and literally like the whole interview was about that um so i won't be surprised if i don't get that job um because the full interview was just i don't understand but you're a wrestler like you don't look like a wrestler like the, literally the full interview so yeah it, it is the weirdest thing nobody gets it yeah it is proper weird like i get people at work saying uh, oh so you do commentary i'm like yeah yeah i do commentary and she's like okay well what does that mean it's like have you ever watched football like the people talking over it it's it's the same thing but people are wearing less clothes <laughs> and more sweaty and probably way more sweaty actually yeah <laughs> <laughs> so well that was an interesting start to the podcast i don't think i've ever started one like just straight out the gates like that <laughs> i think yeah. i'm gonna have to say the same considering um all the other podcasts i've done but hey her have you done many podcasts before um i've done a few um the last one i did was quite a while ago now that it was the broken but glorious one um so oh, okay. i'm pretty used to them but I, I did have my own podcast with a few of my friends, um, but so I am used to them, but not really a guest on them. So it's oh, now that's interesting. What was your podcast about? Um, my podcast was actually about wrestling. Oh, um, so we would do things like bring it to the table, where we would each ask like a question, like in relation to wrestling. It was it was more like just friends getting together, and we had like an episode called Pints and Pile Drivers, where we would just have a load to drink and then watch a really old wrestling um like pay-per-view and that sounds awesome. on it while we were drunk so right that sounds way better than any podcast i've ever done <laughs> so instead of listening to this go and listen to are they can you can they be found anywhere are they hidden away somewhere the, the, i think they're pretty hidden at the minute i think they're only on youtube um but i'm sure i'm sure if people look hard enough they'll find them oh this you're proper interested. We're only three minutes into this, and already I'm super intrigued. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little thing me and my friends did so quite a while ago. So why do you not do it anymore? Is that because you are actively wrestling? So it was getting a little bit more annoying to like do the podcast now that I was wrestling so much. Yeah. Um, it was cool to have like a wrestler's perspective on that podcast though, because the others aren't wrestlers. Um. One of them was a commentator like yourself, um, and then the others were, were just general like fans. Um, but no, yeah, since I don't really do it anymore because I think we've all just like got our own stuff going on now. But we do it for every now and again, but it's, it's very few and far between. That's fair enough. I mean, to be honest, I mean, it can be quite difficult to balance everything, especially if you have a normal person job and then, you know, this strange job that we all do outside of strange yeah. and boring jobs and you know doing podcasts and stuff like that in between it can be quite a lot so i understand where you're coming from completely yeah definitely so how long have you been wrestling um i started training in january 2016 um officially on shows because i was in i was in university at the time so i, I okay. had to take like time off when i'd go back home um you know like for the summer holidays and stuff so i'd have like two months off at a time um but actively on shows since I think 
about a year after that. So since like the start of 2017, mid 2017. So you've not been doing it for that long, really? Then? No, no, not really. So did you did you start this podcast before you started training? Not before I started training. It was before I was on shows there. Um, okay. But I met my friends through training because I didn't have anyone that liked wrestling back where I'm from in Hull. Um, and then when I started uni, no one liked wrestling again. Um, right. And it wasn't until I had absolutely nothing to do with my spare time apart from, and I was pretty sick of getting drunk every night awesome. um, yeah. as student life. I was just getting pretty sick of it. So I was like, oh, I need something to fill up my spare time with. So <laughs> I thought I'd start wrestling because it was something I always wanted to do. Um, and that's how I met like pretty much everyone I speak to now. Like I graduated last year and I don't think I speak to anybody who I went to uni with now because pretty much everyone I speak to is just from from university. Not yet from university, sorry, from um, from wrestling. Oh. So what did you do at university? I did psychology. The, psychology? The, yeah, the cop-out degree. Sorry if anyone's done that, but it is the degree everyone does when they don't know what they want to do, but they can't be bothered working. Really? Um, I didn't, I didn't realise that. I did, uh, I did acting and something else, at music at college, and I thought that was a cop-out, but I didn't realise psychology was. It sounds fancy. Oh, no, it's such a cop-out. Literally, everyone <laughs> we spoke to, like everyone on my course, it was, what do you want to do when you grow up? Or what do you want to do when we graduate? And everyone didn't know. And they've either studied, studied fair education or gone into something completely different. I work in banking now, so and that's absolutely nothing to do with psychology. So it's just not not really relevant. Didn't really need it, to be honest, but I went for the experience. <laughs> well, you got drunk, started a podcast, and then started doing wrestling. So I'd, yeah. I'd say it was pretty good. It was pretty well-rounded, to be honest. You are, yeah. Plus, you know, if you really need to sort of learn something about somebody, then I'm sure you can do that as well. Yeah, in yeah. fair, yeah. <laughs> is that what psychology does? Is that, that's what that is, isn't it? Um, kind of, yeah. It's all like mental health and um, like development of people. I mean, my dissertation was really weird. It was on like postnatal depression, so people like mums and, and their children and stuff. So oh, okay. it's pretty all-rounded subject. There's a little bit of everything, to be honest. Hmm, fair enough. So you're smart, basically. So you've graduated from university, therefore you're smart. Um. I'd use that that word te- sparingly. Um, <laughs> Don't say yourself so short. <laughs> just like, yes, I am. I am smart. Yeah, just, just smart. Just to... Yeah, but not street smart. Not street smart. No. So you didn't grow up on the mean streets of Hull. You weren't sort of kicking it I'm... on the corner. I mean, I did. It was just like I just have no common sense whatsoever. <laughs> like I'm proper ditzy. Like all my mates say to me, like, "How have you got a degree? Like, how literally do you do what you do?" And you're this thick. Like sometimes I just won't even know my left from right. Like it'll just be something really silly like that. But um, book smart, you could say I am a bit, but not really street smart. Okay, so book smart. There you go. So you're smart. <laughs> we'll just we'll just go with that. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay. Makes me sound better. <laughs> um, next thing I want to ask. Uh, well, last thing I want you to do is explain your accent to people because obviously you explained it to me before we started. But uh, you obviously said you're from Hull, but you don't sound like you're from Hull. See, this is really weird. So I am from Hull. Um, if you listen to like my mum and dad talking, they have like the strongest Hull accent ever. Um, same as all my family. And I used to have this proper, proper strong accent. I moved to Liverpool four years ago when I first came to uni. Um, and since then, my accent's just gone like a bit all over the place. So if I go home like for two weeks, I'm back talking like myself again, like I'm back real common and proper like Yorkshire but at the minute I'm just I fluctuate in between um people who are from Hull think I sound like I'm from Liverpool now but everybody I speak to who's a scouser or like people that I work with all think I still sound like really really Yorkshire so it's it's real weird because I told all my scouse friends that everyone thinks I talk like a scouser now and they all tell me I do it so <laughs> you've got little bits in there definitely yeah I think I have as well because my mum and dad pick up on it all the time I, um, I don't know, Liverpool. There you go. That's where you're yeah, from. Yeah, that's my. That's where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's let's talk wrestling. So you've okay. been so you've been training since 2016 and on shows since 2017. Yeah. Where was your Where was the first promotion that you worked? Um, my first proper promotion. So I started training at um a place called RWA. Um, but they ran like their own school shows. But the first like proper promotion I worked for was PCW, okay. um, Preston City Wrestling. So yeah. 
when I was working there, I worked against Rio and in that same week I had so I had a match on, I think it was the Saturday, um, which was at PCW, and then the following week I was working at Alpha, so Alpha Amiga, which is mm-hmm. it's shut down now. But um my my first two promotions were Alpha and, and PCW. So they were like my first proper experiences of like a different crowd and do wrestling somewhere I've never wrestled before you know like having to travel and stuff like that and it was it was all in like the same week so it was quite um like daunting really when I first mm. did it yeah I can imagine I mean it's it's weird I mean I've, I've only been sort of doing commentary since earlier on this year and it's weird sort of walking into that environment if you've not been in that environment before I know yeah I was proper nervous I was shitting myself um I didn't know anyone um I didn't know like like literally I did not know a person and I, I came on my own as well um so I, it's not like I was even going you know like with my mate or some or someone mm. else that was wrestling on the same show um it was literally a case of me just turning up by myself and having to introduce myself to everyone and no one knew who I was because I'd not wrestled anywhere before so it was proper like daunting experience but it's the most friendly thing to be around I find I think uh, when you when you're there like I think um, it it feels like it almost feels like a family almost anywhere you go. Thousand percent. Um, I was probably not expecting that, especially I think it was an all girls show that I was doing. And when I was growing up, I used to do gymnastics, which was predominantly a female sport. Yeah. Um, and in our club, there wasn't any lads. There was there was no lads there. And I found it so bitchy. Like gymnastics was so bitchy. So I was I was going into this this show with the mindset like oh it's going to be really bitchy everyone's going to be like there was at gymnastics it's all girls and I know how, how much of a bitch I can be as a girl do you know what I mean so <laughs> yeah. I just thought oh no this is going to be really bad I'm turning up on my own everyone was so nice like literally like I remember coming away just absolutely buzzing like I probably had one of the worst matches I've ever had but like I was just so buzzing like at how nice everyone was and everyone just like proper looks after you especially when you are in that new environment as well um and i didn't think it would be like that um so i was pleasantly surprised yeah it it is a really strange but really satisfying thing i mean you're right you do come away buzzing for i mean i'm i'm only a commentator so i mean you know i don't obviously be in the ring or anything like that uh get involved physically but you know it just just to be around it and everybody is so friendly and everybody's you know willing to to talk to you and give you advice and all that kind of thing and i just think it's it's nothing like you expect it yeah everyone like plays their important part as well so i know you're saying like oh i don't step in the ring or anything like that but a show like you can't watch back a show without a commentator it's weird you know what i mean so yeah everyone's got an important part to play and without each and every person that sure work go ahead or if it does it work run smoothly and I think that's why everyone is just so respectful and like a family like you say because everyone needs each other like I'll need you to put me over on commentary you'll need me to do a good job to make your life easier on commentary do you know what I mean so yeah it's it's just the thing like everyone needs each other so it's just that like family environment of everyone just being nice and just getting along that's an awesome way of putting it everyone so, needs yeah. each other yeah they do yeah. it's true yeah, you're one hundred percent right. <laughs> I never thought of it like that before. I just like, oh yeah, I just sit here and do talking. To be honest, <laughs> I oh, know believe wrestling me, is... you need me to make your life easier. There's nothing worse than when like someone's like, "What was that move that you did?" <laughs> and you're like, um, "Oh, I don't know. I've not got a name for it." And then like commentate, you're obviously not going to sit there and go, "And Alex is talking doing her spinny thing." <laughs> like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So you need yeah. like us to tell you, or at least make it obvious what we're doing or going for. Yeah, I do usually ask before sort of every show if people yeah. have got names for their moves, and it is amazing how many don't have I names don't. for their moves. I'm you so don't. guilty of that. No, I'm so guilty of it. My one of my friends is a commentator. He's like one of my best friends outside of wrestling, and he's it's all, he um, he works with TNT, and he comes over to me. He's like, "Have you got any moves um, named yet?" And I'm like, "Nope." And he's like, "Right, I'm going to give it this name. Do you mind?" And I'm like, "No, I don't like that name." I'm just so picky with it. He's like, well, if you don't like your name, come up with a name. And I'm just like, well, I will in my own time. I honestly, I just, I can't think of what. The surname you use is Falcon. Surely you can think of something about birds or something. I've tried. I've tried, but I don't do a lot of flying. So I feel like I've come up with the wrong name for myself. Do you know what I mean? So what do you use as your finish? 
Um, my finish at the minute is the twist of fate. Okay. So I've robbed somebody else's name for that. <laughs> okay. Do you, do you call it the twist of fate then? Um, at the moment, yeah. Right. Okay. That's that. When we're, we're not having that, we're going to think of something else for it. I've oh, believe me, I've tried. I've got I've got my um, my friend Kieran, who is the commentator for TNT. Yeah. He's in the works. He's been in the works with it for months. He keeps going mad at me because every show there's like one show a month, and he's like, right, you've got until the next show, and then I'll turn up. And he's like, have you thought of it yet? And I'm like, no. He's like, right, okay, I'll give you till the next show, and I just never come up with it. So has he been just throwing ideas your way, and have you been shutting them down? Yeah. Basically, what, what, yeah. What, what what have we gone through so far? Just give so, me some, a couple of examples. Um, Falcon's Fury was one of them because I like going to um, Orlando on holiday, and it was a ride that I went on um, okay. at Bush Gardens, and I was like, yeah, that's a good name, but I feel like it's a better name for something else. So that's why I didn't go for that. And then we was trying to come up with something Disney related because I'm like obsessed with Disney in real life. Okay. But then I didn't want to feel like I was ripping Disney off. So I just can't win. Right. Falcon's Fury is really good. I might just keep that, you know. And it will sound awesome on commentary as well. Mm, I'll just keep. Do you know what? You can just have that one. You've convinced me. There you go. There we go. So there we go. The twist of fate is now Falcon's Fury. And it, it it's going to sound awesome. It is. <laughs> so you're obsessed with Disney. I am. What's your so favourite Disney film? Oh, don't ask me this, because I've got multiple. So I like Lady and the Tramp, okay. Bambi, and The Little Mermaid. They're, they're my top three, but I okay. can't put them in order. Okay, they're good ones. Aladdin's the best, though. No, that's yes, not the best. It is. No. I, I, get, I have this with people all the time, and everyone's like, no, it's The Lion King. It's like, no, it's not The Lion King. It never has been. Aladdin's the best. Mm, no, see, I disagree, and I feel like no one likes Disney more than I do. So... Mm. Like, I don't want to say that you're wrong, but you're not right, so. Okay, right. <laughs> I'm not wrong, but I'm also not right. Yeah. Okay. Aladdin at least has the best songs. No, it doesn't. So which one has the best songs? The Little Mermaid or Mulan. Mulan? Yeah. Oh. I'll make a man out of you is an absolute banger. It is a banger, but I don't think it's, I don't, I don't think it's up there. Like, it's no Colour of the Wind, but, you know, from Pocahontas. <sighs> That's See, a great I don't like Pocahontas either. See, I'm not a big fan of the film, but I like that song. Mm, I have to disagree. Mm. I, I'm going to put Nightmare Before Christmas in my top four as well. I've added another one, and that's that's four now. Okay, that one I can agree with. I think that's a that's a great movie. It is. I saw I've the other day. Like three that times were... this month. This month? Oh, you big big time Halloween? Yeah. yeah, massive. Right. Okay. Is that your favorite Halloween film? See, I don't know, because is it a Halloween film about Christmas, or is it a Christmas film about Halloween? You can definitely watch it in both October and mm, December, and it'd be fine. I know. But it is probably my favourite Halloween film, because I don't really like actual scary films. Oh. Um, well, I do, but I do actually get a little bit terrified, so I have to sit and like watch the news watch through your eyes. It. Yeah. Watch the news after it. That's the last thing you yeah, want to watch. Yeah, just, just to like, calm me down, just I'm back to the real world. Watch Gogglebox or something. Don't watch the news. The oh, news I is awful. I love Gogglebox. I do as well, yeah. yeah. So good. I've only just started getting into it recently. That and I've been watching a lot of Gordon Ramsay shows. I don't know why. I don't know what, what the obsession oh, is. That I love moment. Gordon Ramsay. He used to have Hell's Kitchen on Netflix and it, they've took it off now and I'm fuming uh, about it. Yeah, I'm fuming as well. I was watching Hell's Kitchen on, because I've got Virgin, right? So they had Hell's Kitchen on demand and then it like went off at the, at the end of last month. I'm fuming uh, still. That's really annoying. Yeah, it's really annoying. I love him. So, <laughs> I was uh, scrolling through Facebook earlier on today. Yeah. I say earlier on today, I mean like an hour ago. <laughs> and uh, I saw this thing and, you know, I had it on my screen and I was just gone. But it was like a, a page from WWE fan page. Yeah. And uh, she basically, or they, he, he could be he, I have no idea. But um, they basically put uh, a top 30 list of women working on the UK independence scene at the minute. Oh. And you weren't in there. I'm joking, you were. Um, so you were, you were in there. They, they were in no particular order. They were, you were number 20. They were? Yeah. Who's made this? I don't know. Someone who's made a page fan page on, on oh. Facebook. It was oh, quite coincidental, see. actually, because I was preparing myself to, to speak to you, and then it just came up. And I was like, That's oh. That's real strange. See, I've not checked Facebook since I got in, but 
I do hate stuff like that, you know. Like even though it's like it's like flattering to be in it, but yeah. there's nothing worse than when like you look at a list like that and then you just go, well, "Why aren't they in there? Or why aren't they in there? Or why are they in there and that person isn't?" Do you know what I mean? So like, I just think those lists are so subjective. Like, like the same way that we were just naming our favorite Disney films. Like, you think Aladdin's the best? I don't. Like, you're. In, do you know what I mean? So yeah. I kind of hate stuff like that. Like, even though it's like an honor to be in it. I kind of just hate it anyway because I just think that's going to make someone somewhere feel like shit. You know what I mean? Like, someone is going to read that and take it so literally. Like, for me, if I wasn't in it, it would just go over my head and I'd be like, okay. But, like, someone is going to lose, probably struggling with wrestling because we all go through that where we think, oh, my God, I just want to quit. You know where you have that week where you just can't deal with wrestling for just a week? Someone will see that. I'm like, oh, that's it. I'm one of the worst wrestlers. I'm not even in the top 30. Like, so I just really hate stuff like that. I know that sounds really negative of me to say, but it just, they piss me off. Right. I'm going to message that person. But like, oh, look, take her off. She doesn't, she doesn't deserve, she doesn't, doesn't deserve that accolade of being She's number 20. She's so unappreciative. Yeah. Such yeah. A take brand. her off. Yeah. She's just. Do you know what? My my boyfriend would be, if he could hear this conversation, he'd be saying to me right now, you're the only person that I know that can complain about a good thing, <laughs> which I am. I do it all the time. But yeah, um, see, I thought it was a good thing. I was like, oh, that you know, that's really good. And plus, I'm going to speak to her soon. And this is going to be a good, you know, bit of conversation. And you've just, <laughs> you, you, you've ruined what could have been a great <laughs> moment. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. Oh no, I'm sorry. I am. I'm really like honoured that I'm, that someone thinks somewhere that I'm in the top thirty women's wrestlers. But like when you do put it together, like the, there's probably people on there that that shouldn't be, and probably someone that isn't on there that should be. Do you know what mm. I mean? Like stuff like that's just also subjective. Um, and I wouldn't want to be like, oh look at me, I'm in the top thirty women's wrestlers because who said that? Do you know what I mean? Like it's like it's not like it's Pro Wrestling Illustrated. It, we we literally do not know. I I haven't seen the post yet, but unless I do know the page, but I don't know who wrote that. Right. So yeah. Well, that's so, this podcast over then. <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of that. <laughs> Obviously, I think was the, it you the, that wrote it? Are you it was, definitely club? wasn't me. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, but you know what? Even if I, if I did make that list, you wouldn't be in there because oh, you well, don't deserve it. I'm just unappreciative, aren't I? Yeah. I really am. If anyone says to me, like going forward now, oh, Alexis Falcon's really good, I'd be like, she's all right, but she, she wouldn't appreciate you saying that. So, balls to her. She's all right. She's not in the top 30, though. Just think no. about that. Yeah, she, she's not even in the top 100. <laughs> there are people just training at the minute that are way better than her. I'm probably more appreciative. <laughs> I think the purpose of the list, uh, based on sort of, I, I had a skim through the post, I didn't read it all because it was a bit wordy and I couldn't be asked to read it. Um, it was. Um, I think it was just to, to illustrate just how um, how much talent there is in this country at the minute, sort of. Well, uh, I'm glad. From a female I am perspective. Glad for that. Yeah, because, like, you know, when I did first start, um, before I was like on shows or anything, obviously, when you first start training, you get familiar with like the UK scene and stuff. Yeah. And they were literally like, I probably knew of about maybe 15, 20 women's wrestlers that like consistently, like, you know who you'd always see. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you look at them now, they've like gone on to bigger and better things. Yeah. And then there's so much talent coming up now. Like who, three, even three years, like I say, when I first started, um, like three, four years ago nearly, like there was nowhere near that much talent. Nowhere near. Like now there's like multiple women's matches on shows. Like, and that's another thing that like kind of like grinds my gears when, you hear promoters saying like, "Oh, we, we've not got the room for a women's um, match this card on this card," and I'm like, mm -hmm. "Why? Like, so many women's wrestlers now. Like, there, there's literally like all women's shows, there's all women's promotions, and I yeah. just think like it's so good how many like women's like female talent there is now. It's it shouldn't amazing. even be it shouldn't even be a thing that's separated because I you know, agree." Women and the men are, you know, the, you know, there are women that are better than the men, and uh, uh, you know, and vice versa. Men. You know, yeah, vice, exactly. So, I mean, it should just be everyone's not separated into sort of sex, like male and female. It should just be everyone's talent, as yeah, opposed to being I sort agree. of 
especially with the amount of mixed matches that we see these days as well, where it is sort of male yeah. versus female and stuff like I that. I think that's why I enjoy um, like intergender wrestling so much because especially when like you are against the male, like men plan so differently to women, like they plan their matches so differently um, and like they work in such a different way. So you can learn so much from wrestling a man the same way that they probably say about women, oh my God, women plan so differently. Like, really? That's, in, that's quite interesting, you know, because I've never heard that I before. Found, that's what I found. So, like, I just find that men, like, they plan, like, so differently to women. Um, what In what way? So, like, they'll usually, this is only from my experience, this is, like, the okay. men that, that I've wrestled, but they'll normally plan from, like, the finish down, whereas, like, women will plan from the start up. Um, right. And, Sometimes I've found that people go, like, to and from little bits. Um, it's it's so weird. Like, I can't really explain it. But, like, I've learned so much wrestling men in the same way that they've probably learned wrestling women. Um, mm. In the same way that, they like, I've learned that I can't do certain moves on men. In the same way that men have probably learned that they can't do uppercuts on women because it hurts our boobs no matter how light you do it. Right, like, fair enough. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's just so much stuff that I think... Especially now, like when, like in the last year, I've had so many intergender matches that in my first year of wrestling, I don't think I had one. Um, I think maybe I had like the odd mixed tag, which even that is like the men can only hit the men, the women can only hit the women. And there is still promoters that are like, oh, intergender wrestling is like domestic violence, promotes domestic violence, but it doesn't. It doesn't, not at all. No, no, no not, not one bit. thousand percent. No, it, it really does not. I genuinely believe that's why WWE doesn't do it. Well, it really pisses me off when, when people say that because the, the, my, like, opinion on it is if it promotes domestic violence, surely a woman, a woman wrestling a woman promotes same-sex violence. So that's – I wouldn't just walk out of my house right now and, you know, stun her, the first person that I saw, because I've seen it on TV. Do you know what I mean? Like, if, if that was the case, I wouldn't have a job. Um, like <laughs> none of us would like we would all everyone would be fighting all the time all the kids would be fighting like we know it's not acceptable we know it's like we know that the performers um like playing a role yeah so i just i've never understood that argument it, it really grounds my gears when people say that yeah i'm with you there i mean it's almost um i mean if anything it promotes equality yeah i agree as, as opposed to sort of i mean you know, it's 20, 2019 now, obviously we're pretty close to 2020. And the fact that, you know, these things are still argued against is, is it is crazy to me, especially when it is like with, with WWE obviously not doing it. The thing is, it's all, you see it all the time. It's all over the internet, intergender wrestling. So it's not like wrestling fans don't know it's there. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean by that? It's like, so yeah. the fact that they don't do it is them being sort of more ignorant and probably insulting fans' intelligence to a degree. I know. I agree. I agree completely. It it really grinds my gears. There's there's um obviously like not going into it too much, but my ex partner, he really mm. didn't agree with like he was like, I, I think it's stupid that like women can wrestle men and things like that. And I like I used to go out and do it. Um, and he used to kind of see that about it, but I was like, at the end of the day, I was like, what? Like, I don't understand what difference it makes. He was very old school in his mindset, though, and that was an interesting like mindset to have because I've never had that. I know when I used to watch wrestling as a kid, if I ever saw like a woman, you know, like on the odd occasion where they, like mm-hmm. on WWE where they they do angles where yeah. a woman would I don't know like punch a man or something like that like stand up for herself i know like the little girl inside of me that little feminist my five-year-old feminist would be popping at that like i'm such a feminist it's not even funny (laughs) and like honestly like i can't understand why people don't want to do it like i I think it's brilliant like i think it's like we're showing little girls who otherwise would think like because we are brought up in a society whether even if it is 2019 we are brought up to still think that women are lesser than men yeah. Um, and I think it's amazing that, like, women are showing people what they can do. Do you know what I mean? So Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. It's, um, I love intergender wrestling. I, I, want, I want to do it all the time. <laughs> who's your um, – who have you wrestled from a male perspective? Um, so my favourite match that I ever had um, against the man was against um, 
Deadly Damon Lee. I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, yep. He does a lot on the North West. He's been around for years um, and he does a lot of comedy. And the whole match, it was like a comedy match that we had. Um, but it was for a car parking space. So the win- winner won a car parking space. So he <laughs> he came out going, who is it with the blue Ford Fiesta that's parked in my car parking space? Get out here and fight me now like a man. Um, and then obviously I came out. So that was like the angle of it. Um, I've wrestled Brady Phillips, um, Jack and Freddie Riley, Lance Rivera. Um, just recently I, I was in a fatal four-way match with Matt Brooks. Terry is it and Joe Bolton okay. um, at Wrestle Island and uh, at Wrestle Island as well in February I was in a rumble which was an intergender rumble cool. um, where I actually went from number one to number 30 against men as well so there was I mean I'm, I'm not going to sit and name I think there was only two other girls in that so I can't really be bothered to sit and name 27 men that was in there right. yeah, don't worry, yeah. you get the gist <laughs> yeah sure um <laughs> You know, I've, I've I've completely been thrown off there. Now, uh, since I asked that question, you were just reeling all that off. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. I, I ran yeah, a little right. bit. No, 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 not at all. It's my, it's my fault for asking the question, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is there, is there anybody that you want to wrestle? Anybody I want to Do wrestle? Do you haven't yet? Oh, oh, I really want to wrestle Cameron Solis. Okay. Um... I'd also like to wrestle me fella, you know, JJ Webb. I don't know if you've, yeah. if you've heard of him. He wrestles for Future Shock. I'd love to wrestle him just to batter him, to be honest. But, Fair, yeah. Because um, I can't really do that, like, when we're in house, do you know what I mean? But, like, I can literally just, like, hit all the moves, get all my shit in, <laughs> tire yeah. him out, and just, just let him know that's because what he gets for not doing the dishes. So, um, so yeah. But cool. th- there's a lot of people I would like to wrestle. Um, Lucas Steele as well. He's He's brilliant. He's so good. Um, and Joey Hayes. I'd really like to wrestle Joey Hayes at some point because I think he is literally the best talent in the UK at the moment. There you go. Promoters listening to this podcast, you know who to book Alexis against. Please book me against Joey Hayes. He doesn't know that I want to wrestle him, but I do. So I'll let doesn't him know. Yeah, he'll know when this goes out. <laughs> I'll tweet him and I'll tag him in it. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, by the way, only in wrestling will you fight over a parking space. Oh, I know it was the, it was honestly the, my favorite match I've ever had. It was at um, Mr. Cat's Wrestling. Um, I don't know if you've heard of them, but they just do like the full show is just comedy. Like basically, they had a lumberjack match where there was inflatable sharks as the lumberjacks. So that's like the kind of wrestling that it is there. Um, and yeah, we had a match over a car parking space. Um, that's what I love about wrestling, though. It's so um, diverse. And there's oh, no form is. of entertainment like it. No, there really isn't. And then the the hilarious part about that that match was that we were actually setting ourselves up to be a tag team. So he came out and said, who is in my car parking space? Get out here now. I came out. We just did all of the moves. Like, we know sold Canadian destroyers. Like, we were just literally, like, having banter with the match. At the end, I won. And then I said to him, I got on the mic and I said, do you want to just come in my car next time? So that was literally the promo. It was like we were having a full-on conversation. I, I literally just said, do you want to just come in my car next time? I'll drive. I don't mind. Like that. Like literally just like a full-on convo. And then the show after, he came out with me, like still as a heel. And I came out as a baby face and he came out like all angry. And I came out and shouted, oh, come on, Warrington. You know, like the typical baby face come on and then name the town that you're in yeah. so i sent him back and i was like no no no. the way that you be a baby face is that you go through the curtain and you shout come on and then you say what town you're in and he was like all oh, right okay so then he goes backstage comes back and goes come on warrington and it was just like the funniest like that is the kind of wrestling <laughs> that he's at mr cats um just to give you an overview so yeah there's nothing wrong with comedy wrestling at all i, I love I that love there it. is so many different styles i mean one of my one of my favorite guys uh tim lee i don't know if you know tim yeah um he he calls himself the king of comedy strong style which is a great nickname um <laughs> but he's awesome as well he does uh he does a really good comedy gimmick he comes out to uh like a disco version of enter sandman by metallica and it's the oh, my best. god i need awesome. to listen to that yeah it's awesome I do love comedy wrestling, though. I think I think there's always time for it. Oh, um, for sure. Like we're, we're going out and making ourselves look silly anyway. Like we are silly for um, bumping around. 
Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, yeah. like what's in, like, I get people at work saying to me all the time, like, why do you do that? Like, are you not worried that you're going to hurt yourself? Like, why do you do it if you're in so much pain all the time? But like, we're stupid anyway for, for putting our bodies through that. So we may as well have some fun with it while we're doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's just the most fun form of entertainment. I hate sort of when people, you know, uh, I don't know if you know, like when Sky Sports post stuff about WWE. Yeah. And then you get the knobheads in the comments. They're like, oh, why are they, why are they putting this pantomime stuff on? It's like, yes. you don't get it, do you? <laughs> it's like, we, the, us, the wrestling fans, we know what it is. We know that it's, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say, I hate saying the word fake, but, you know, it, we know what it is. Like, we don't need Liverpool fan Mark, like, saying, <laughs> telling us that it's fake or whatever. You know what I, I mean? love those people, though. They're my favourite people to, like, Ha ha! React at their comments on Facebook because <laughs> the ones who were like, "Oh, I can't even believe Sky Sports are promoting this oh, fake yeah, bullshit," Jesus, and I'm like, "Okay, that's fine." Like, if I see something that I like, I see like trailers for Emmerdale all the time. Now, I absolutely love Coronation Street and EastEnders, but I can't get into Emmerdale. I see the like soap spoilers come up all the time for Emmerdale. I just scroll past. Like, why do people even take like five minutes that's out it. of the day to comment? That's I the funniest thing. It. It's like wrestling has outraged me so much that I need to put in there that I don't yeah. like it. and Other people shouldn't like it either because it's yeah. rubbish. It's like, <laughs> why? What are you doing? Yeah, like, go somewhere else. Go go, go look at something you do want to watch. Yeah, I have like, no issues. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, if I see stuff that I don't like, I just scroll past it. See? Like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did you do today? Well... You know, this morning I saw a wrestling post on BBC and I was I can't believe they promote that kind of garbage so I told everyone about it it's like <laughs> right okay that's cool you're you're hard <laughs> congratulations for not liking wrestling I know so to it. obviously you uh, scroll past Emmerdale posts on Facebook and also dislike top 30 performers oh. in the country on Facebook as well so <laughs> I you're... feel like a crank <laughs> <laughs> I hope the person that rates you so highly doesn't hear this podcast because they're going to be like, right. Like I said to you, they're just going to cross you off the list. No, but they'll do it, obviously, like a red line through me. I'll tag you, <laughs> in it. Top 29 wrestlers in the UK. <laughs> there was 30, but uh, number 30 is a bitch. So. <laughs> um, what got you, I usually start with this, right? This has been... Like, this has been a lot of fun for me. Um, what, what what got you into wrestling? Like, what what made you want to be a wrestler? Um, so when I was younger, I I started watching wrestling when I was like quite late on. Um, pretty much at the time when everyone else in school was kind of growing out of it. Um, but my granddad he actually showed me it, and I remember I was I was in like a little bit of a tomboy stage at school, and I remember my mum saying to him like, oh, "Fucking hell, what are you showing her this shit for? Like, I'm trying to get her out of all that. I'm trying to, you know, make her girly and stuff." And I just remember being absolutely mesmerised. But it was when you know, like, um, Lita and Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, yeah, um, were like a thing. So that was when I was started watching it, and I was absolutely mesmerised by them three. Absolutely mesmerised by it, um. And then, obviously, when the whole, like, Edge thing happened, when Lita turned to, like, go with Edge. Obviously, it wasn't until I was, like, 16 years old that I realised that that was a shoot. But um, <laughs> we'll we'll gloss over that one. Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, like, I just remember, like, thinking, and I, I turned around to my mum and I was like, I want to be a wrestler when I'm older. And wh- the, when I was watching it, the women were doing, you know, like, the bra and panty matches and stuff like that. And I remember my mum saying to me, like, over my dead body, are you going to be a wrestler? <laughs> like, absolutely not. And I used to say, I'm like, no, 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 no. I want to be like Jeff Hardy. I want to be like Jeff Hardy. I'll wrestle Jeff Hardy if I have to. Because um, I hated all of the bra and panty stuff. I absolutely hated it. That's so why I took. You weren't in so, your room sort of uh, wearing your bra and pants, like hitting <laughs> a dummy with a pillow, thinking <laughs> this is what I'm going to do with the rest yeah. of my life. This is what I'm going to do. I don't want to be the top 30, but I want to do this. Yeah. Basically, yeah, that that's I'm not gonna lie to you. You've rumbled me there. Yeah, um, I thought I had. No, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm messing. Um, no, I was just absolutely mesmerised by it, and I was, like I say, I watched it quite late on. I'll never forget, like when I when we were started secondary school, we were in year seven, 
and our teacher went round and said to everyone our farm tutor so we was in them classes until we left school our farm tutor went round to everyone and said what do you want to be when you grow up what do you want to be when you grow up and I went I want to be a wrestler and I'll never forget this right so this is what has driven me to be a wrestler so to answer your question this is what made me be a wrestler and this one lad at the back of the class went you need to be fit to be a women's wrestler and I was like oh my god did not live it down until I left school. So, like, even when I'd stopped re- watching it for a little bit, everyone would be like, ha-ha, you want to be a wrestler? Proper got rinsed for it. Proper got bullied for it. And then I worked in shoe while I was in uni. So, when I was at, like, over Christmas a few years ago, I went, I got transferred to the Hull shop so I could, like, go home for a few weeks and work at the same time. Mm-hmm. And the same lad walked in and he was like, oh hi i've seen your facebook i can't believe you're a wrestler now that's <laughs> so sick like proper being up my ass about it and i just turned around and i went you did nothing but take the piss out of me at school for saying that when i was in year seven and now i'm actually doing it and you want to be on me mate i was like i don't think so i was fuming so like people taking the piss out of me at school like proper drove me to do it i was like do you know what I was like, I'm going to have to now, aren't I? I I can't just say it, get rinsed for it for five years and then not go ahead and do it. Someone walks into you and she's like, so um, how was that dream of becoming a wrestler? And you're like, well, I'm working here and that's it, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. So to be fair... If if that was my full-time job, they'd have been like, ha, ha, I told you you couldn't be a wrestler. So I was like, "Mm, ha, ha, I told you I could. Yeah, and then it would have been like, you got that pillow out in class showing the kind of wrestling that you wanted to do for nothing. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so you've been, so it's 2019 now. You've been wrestling on shows for the last two years. Yeah. Uh, where do you see yourself in a further two years? Where do you want to be? I want to go to Japan. Okay. Um, I do, I want to like get really big on the UK scene because I think that's my next step, really. Um, I'm, I'm hitting the Northwest pretty frequently. Like I'm wrestling at least once a week. In fact, I've got the next, I've had this last weekend and this weekend off wrestling. I purposely didn't take any bookings because right. I literally just need my body to just breathe. Um, and I've just moved house as well. So I've, I've got a lot of stuff to do um, outside of wrestling and work. So Moving house just, is the worst. Oh, oh, I've hated every moment of it. But oh, don't get me right. wrong, like everything's pretty much done now. I just want like a bit of time to settle and stuff. Um, but so yeah, like I'm pretty much wrestling it consistently every weekend at least twice a weekend um sometimes like three or four times a week so just want to get like big on the uk scene and then i do want to go to japan hopefully in the next two to three years okay. um because i think like, you see like the people who have gone to japan especially like the girls who have gone to stardom and stuff and yeah. they've gone like one wrestler and they've come back a completely different wrestler do you know what i mean so yeah sure i think it'd do me a lot of good going there I think I saw today that uh, New Japan have bought Stardom. Oh, I saw that. I saw that on my break today in work, and I was shocked. Because uh, the rumour is that they were, well, that this is the rumour based on them buying Stardom, is that they're going to start a women's division, because New Japan obviously don't have one. Yeah, well, that's what I, saw, I thought, but that, that rumour's been going around for a while, you know, mm. um, and it kind of, like, resurfaces every now and again, so I never know whether to believe it or not. Until I see them post an official statement, I'm just taking it with a pinch of salt that's probably the best thing to do to be honest there's so much clickbait nonsense on the internet these days yeah Uh, so um so you want to go to japan no wwe aspirations or anything like that oh yeah i want to go to wwe but i think like in order to get there i would need to you know like establish myself here first and establish myself in japan and learn that different style of working um, sure. So I can pretty much be like an all-rounder kind of thing. Um, thing is, a lot it's of probably... the girls that, no, yeah. So a lot of the girls that WWE really pick have been to Japan. Do you know what I mean? Like they've had that tour. So I think it'd do me a lot of good, to be honest. I think. I mean, the the, the route to WWE is probably a lot more obtainable than it probably once was. Yeah, 100%. Especially sort of with uh, the rise of NXT UK and stuff like that. I mean, what do you think yeah. to NXT UK and the, the British scene in general? Because obviously you hear a lot of negativity towards WWE and the fact that they have started NXT UK and they're quote-unquote swallowing up the UK scene and blah, blah, blah. What do, you, what do you make of all of that stuff that people talk about? To be honest, I think, and this is coming from somebody who's, I've, I've never had a tryout, never been approached for a tryout, nothing like that. I think... 
with the people who have gone to NXT UK and have really like done well, like I'm talking the likes of like Zach Gibson, James Drake, um, Tony Storm, you know, people like that. It really opens up people like myself and like the likes of the young guns to now flourish in what they're doing. So when one person goes, they're, Zach and James are as good as you can get for a tag team. That's yeah. why they're doing so well in NXT UK. If there was no NXT UK, there'd be a lot of other really good tag teams who wouldn't be getting booked and wouldn't be getting paid because people would want Zach and JD. So it just, I think it makes, if anything, it's done nothing but good for our scene, to be honest. I know there has been all that like beef with you know, like them pulling talent and stuff, but we don't really know what's gone on then. I I can't really comment just because I I ain't got a clue. Yeah, what's I, th- gone on. I agree. I mean, I think, um, and I wish people would sort of hear, uh, you know, wrestlers who do wrestle on the independents hear them say that because it's always like the it's always the fans. They so they hear one thing and then they take it and they run with it, and then WWE are the bad guy. They don't see that it's it's broadened horizons for. Talent that you know otherwise wouldn't get that opportunity. Like Tony Storm, she's obviously been on the scene for years, so WWE was probably the logical step. Exactly, yeah. And the thing is, what a lot of fans don't realize is that the fans that complain, just as an example, right? Let's just say TNT, just because I I live in Liverpool and it's the first promotion I can think of. So, a lot of the TNT fans are hardcore wrestling fans, right? God love them. If they were to complain about it, I'm not saying they do because I don't know if they do or not. But if they was to complain about it and say, oh, do we do it? taking all the talent. All the TNT fans are that loyal. They're going to go to that TNT show no matter who gets booked. That's no it. matter who is booked on that show. Because they are loyal TNT fans, they will go and support that product. Not the wrestlers, the product. Yeah. So they're going anyway, whether the, their favourite stands on NXT or not. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you can't guarantee their favourite wrestler might be injured. Not with NXT, not with TNT. They might be injured. They're not doing that show. They're still going to buy that ticket. So yeah. a lot of the fans who do complain, they're going to shows anyway because a lot of fans, you probably see it in your area a lot, yeah. go to the same shows again and again and again. You get the same people that you know are going to turn up because they support the product. They support the wrestlers as well, but they support generally like a Northwest or like a South to you like product. And I just think that that's why it's like it doesn't really make a difference because you're going to be going anywhere. And if you want to watch your favourite wrestler but you can't afford to, to go to a WWE event, that's fine. You can watch them on telly. Like, it's the best of both worlds, I think. I agree. And, you know, even if your favourite wrestler does go to NXT, your new favourite wrestler is going to be coming up. And it, it's just, it's just um, to quote Disney, it's the, it's the circle of life of wrestling. It basically. is. It really is. It li- that is literally the best way to describe it, though. Yeah, and it's, I just, I wish people would sort of look at it logically. I mean, wrestling is a business at the end of the day. You know, businesses close down and then other businesses open up. And that's, it's the same in wrestling. You know, things, yeah. sometimes things aren't sustainable and we don't know the full story as to, you know, why they've led to, why companies have, you know, folded or been bought out or anything like that. Yeah. There's always something in the background that obviously we wouldn't know about. Yeah. But obviously, you know, with the internet and how prominent it is in 2019, people think they know everything. And it's, I don't know, it's, sometimes it can be a bit of a toxic thing to be around wrestling, but it's still the best. Yeah, I agree. And the thing is, you can't, like, you're not going to keep having the same people on the shows all the time because, like you say, it's not fair on up and coming talent. Like, I know I'm not going to be around forever. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it wouldn't yeah. be fair for the shows that I'm on now if in 10 years' time, when I'm not as good as I used to be or not as good as I am now, they're still booking me just because they have to book me because that's the show I've been on all that time. No, like, they're, they're a business at the end of the day. They're going to book who's going to make them the most money. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I wish, I mean, I understand, you know, people get angry because they want to see their favourite stars up close and, and that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's it's and I don't I mean it's in the, the best possible way. It's just wrestling. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you on that one. You know, and obviously there's there's those of us that sort of uh that that do it outside of normal life to entertain people and you know, it, that's great, but at the end of the day it is just wrestling. There there is yeah. more things to be angry about than that. Yeah, I agree. 
So yeah, um, you know what? I've had an absolute blast talking to you on this podcast. So have I. I've loved this podcast. I've had such a good run. Good. Uh, that makes me happy. I'm, I'm glad you've had a good time. I've had a great time. I feel like I could talk to you for hours. <laughs> Maybe we should do like a Disney podcast. Oh my God, can we? <laughs> We'll just we'll just uh, we'll just rank Disney films and obviously disagree yes. or massively. Yeah. I mean, my list will be the right one. It'll be like a quiz. <laughs> More of a quiz. Can you get the right answer? Yeah. Uh, well, I got the right answer because Aladdin's the best. I mean, again, you are wrong, but I I will let it slide. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I can't. I can't accept it. I just can't. I mean, I can't accept it either because... Especially if you put Lady and the there. Tramp in there. I can't oh, believe my it. No, my dog is the same dog as Lady <laughs> and the Tramp. So it's the same dog as Tramp. It's a schnauzer. And she's called Boo, like the dog, off Mon- like the little girl off Monsters, Inc. And my cat's called Lilo, like off Lilo and Stitch. So you love Disney? I really do. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think to the... Um, are you excited about uh, the Disney Plus on-demand thing that's coming? Yeah, I've already got Disney Life, which is practically the same. Oh. Um, so, but it's going to have more. So, a thousand percent, I'll be getting it. All my money, all my wages go to Disney. Like, literally, they do. My auntie works for Disney. Oh my god, stop it! I want to work for them, but I feel like it would ruin it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I want to go and work in Disney World, but I feel like it would ruin the holiday experience for me. Which is why I haven't applied. Have you? You've been to Disneyland, haven't you, and stuff in Florida? Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite Disney park over there? Animal Kingdom, hands down. Yeah, I'd say that's probably fair. fair I do like fair. Hollywood Studios. Oh, see, I, what, now that the Star Wars land's been built, I might change my mind next year. Um, yeah, I'm going that. in September with my mum and dad. But ah, we're staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge because Ooh. I love Animal Kingdom that much. So that's where nice. we decided we're staying. Well, um, you must be absolutely balling if you can afford to stay at Disney. I mean, my dad's paid for it. Your so... daddy's balling. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get in his no it was quite cheap you know I think it only cost like £1,800 per person for flights hotel park tickets and um, the dining plan so because we got it one and there was a deal on so it wasn't actually that much money for two oh, okay. weeks as well there we go so if uh, you want to go and stalk Alexis Falcon you know where she's going to be next September you do yeah that's where I am <laughs> don't, do, don't do that <laughs> you'd love to be recognised in Florida I can just tell <laughs> I know I would are you Alexis? Fa- I am. I am. How did you know I was going to be here? Do you want a picture? <laughs> I'll sign you Mickey Mouse out. No worries. <laughs> you got your autograph book with you. I'll sign it. Don't worry. <laughs> <sighs> Good times. What did you think to the Disney remakes? I know we're, this is a wrestling podcast, so people are going to be I like, know, what the fuck know, are they yeah. talking about? They'll probably stop listening at this point, but I don't that's care. That's all right. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I love them. I love them. You know, the Aladdin, you know, you were saying that Aladdin's the best film. I think yeah. the Aladdin remake was better than the original Aladdin film. I see. I agree as well. I, I think so as well. I, I mean, I you have to it. tread carefully because people love Robin Williams as the genie. I but... know, but come on. Will Smith did such a good job. I thought it was awesome. Such a good job. Like, honestly, like, my hat was off to him because... I know loads of people that was going, oh, like, he's going to do a shit job. Like, you can never replace... And I was like, what do you want them to do? Like, you can't bring somebody back just for the sake of a film. I was like, like, you're going to have to just accept and get over it. Like, yeah. they've got Will Smith playing the genie. Like, he's either going to vomit it or he's not. And then when he did it, everyone was like, oh, he was all right, wasn't he? And I was like, I told you, he'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, he was absolutely awesome. And this, the I, I was, like, grinning... I wanted to sing in the cinema. I was just like, I look, I, I want to sing along to this. Oh, I did. Get in. I literally did. I went to go and see um, Christopher Robin last year, and Winnie the Pooh was one of my favourites. Oh, yeah. And um, I cried from start to finish, but not even like sad crying, you know, just like happy crying. Yeah. And I was literally crying that much. And the person I was in the cinema with was like, Alex, I'm going to walk out in a minute if you carry on because this is embarrassing now. And there was a couple behind me who was just pissing themselves laughing because I was crying that much. And then I cried at the end because it was over. (laughs) Honest to God, like I can't be contained when it comes to Disney films, especially the remakes. She cannot be contained. Lady in the Tramp's being remade, isn't it? I know. I'm a bit nervous for that one because, like I say, that is my favourite. So, like, what if I don't like it? But I'm... it's not the best, but it's your favourite. I'm glad you admitted that finally. No, I never. No, said you, it no, was... no, you, no, no, you, you, no, you, you said um, it's my favourite. You didn't say it was the best, so there you go. <sighs> really? I'll give, I see. You've, you've even admitted you've defeat. You've rumbled me there. I've you've rumbled, rumbled you fully. me there. Secret Aladdin fan. 
I know. Maybe I am. Live action Aladdin fan. I'll there we do go. That one. Okay. All right. Well, we'll 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 ex- we'll accept that. Good. Okay. That's all I'm giving you. Right, so all the Disney fans that are still listening, thank you for, uh, for thank you for sticking with us. Um, if you're a wrestling fan and you were hoping for more wrestling, you're shit out of luck. I I am sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> um, Alexis, before we go, where can we find you performing in the next few weeks? Um, I will be at Future Shock, um, TNT Ignition in November. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, and. Um, exposure wrestling in Cardiff as well. So yeah. There you go. Good stuff. Where can we find you on social media? At Alexis Falcon with two X's, not one, because everybody spells my name wrong. On Instagram and Twitter, and I've got a Facebook page as well, but I never really use that. It's difficult to get off the ground, ain't it, Facebook? I know. I just can't take to it. I can for my personal like page, but them Facebook pages that you make, I just don't know how they work. And yeah, anyone can message you on it, and all them creepy wrestling fans message me all the time, thinking it's like actually me, and it isn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you mean it's not actually you? You're the one who controls it, though. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. Like they think that the messaging, like like Alex, like they, they think the messaging, like me, like Alex, right. like talking to me as if it's like Alex, but it's like the Alexis Falcon like page. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> Right, don't message the Alexis Falcon Facebook page because it isn't her. There we go. <laughs> it's not top 30 UK female superstar Alexis nope. Falcon. It's... Not anymore. No, it's not. No. It's... So don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> right, everybody, Alexis Falcon, thank you for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. All right, so there it is. Great interview, right? This was the longest one we've done yet here on Wrestling Things. I had an absolute blast. Thank you so much, Alexis Falcon, for joining me. Um, I'm really enjoying doing this series, you know. Uh, It was awesome when Josh from 1310 approached me and said that he wanted to do this new series. And I felt real privileged that he asked me. I know I've said it before, but I am incredibly grateful for the opportunity. And it's great for me because I get to speak to all of these awesome wrestlers um, for your listening pleasure now um just a few things before i go be sure to check out 1310 apparel so it's 1310apparel.bigcartel.com and you can use the code sunny g at checkout to get 10 percent off your order okay which is pretty awesome they've got some great stuff in they've got some new hoodies coming new t-shirts and it's just a really cool brand check them out on twitter as well which is at 1310 app all right also go check out turnbuckle tv it's just 3.99 a month for some of the best independent wrestling action that the uk has to offer it's a bargain and well worth checking out plus you get to hear me on commentary now finally last plug i promise go check out the games and grats podcast it's where finn and myself talk wrestling and video games on a weekly basis you can check that out across podcast services all over the world and it's on the same feed that you can find this podcast wrestling things but for now thank you so much for listening to this brand new episode of wrestling things with alexis falcon i'm sunny g and i will speak to you next time take it easy guys goodbye